This episode of Please Send Dick Pics is brought to you by Lumatask, maker of Twinkle Twinkle Sparkle Sparkle in the Night Sky. See all those those stars you see in the night sky at night? That's Lumatask making that happen. Check them out at lumatask.com. Oh, because, baby, you're my lucky star. <laughs> comedian and um she's in los angeles but where are you from originally maine maine uh-huh. Shout that explains maine. everything <laughs> do i seem maine <laughs> you seem very maine like a maine coon i don't know are there maine coons in maine uh maine coon cats yeah oh wow yeah. okay cool i didn't get the name makes sense um, there's, I heard there's coyotes in New York. Do you have coyotes, like, in that area, closer to Maine? No, we never had coyotes. <laughs> How did I get up there? <laughs> we had, like, bobcats, but not coyotes. Any other weird things that we don't have, like, in California or Arizona? Um, I don't know other weird things. We have a ton of mos- mosquitoes, like, that are <laughs> Okay. And that doesn't really seem to be a West Coast issue. Well, sometimes I wake up and my legs are bit up. Like, I don't know, it's like during the summer, sometimes. I don't know, I've never lived in Arizona, so... Oh, maybe it's just, maybe it's just Arizona. Okay, oh, we're like kind of southern. But, yeah, we were kind of bad in the Civil War era. Um, all right, <laughs> that sounds bad. Um, so let's see, how was your week? You are here, um, just for the show yesterday, the shows? Um, I came in and I did, uh, This Week Sucks on Thursday night, which was mm. great. hmm um, and then I had, uh, two nights at, uh, Comedy Off Me, and now I'm driving back today. Sweet. And, uh, you said you had a good night on Friday for yeah. the show. Yeah, yeah. What joke went really well? Like, what thing went really well that you didn't think would go well? Oh, um, it's hard to say. I just remember there were a few times I was, like, riffing and people seemed to like it, <laughs> which is always the, like, funny thing in comedy where it's, like... You have your, like, joke that you've been polishing forever, and they're like, that's okay. Yeah. And then you have some, like, thought that just occurred to you in the moment that you say, and they're like, ah, we love that, we love that. I like, know. And I don't know how much of it's just because it's so much more sincere, because it really is just, like, something very genuine to that moment you're having right there with them. Yeah. And that's why it's funnier, because if you try and recreate it, a lot of the times it doesn't work. Like if you rec- sometimes I record my set and I'm like, oh, what if I said that again? But it's not the same. Like yeah. sometimes, yeah. Or it's like I I said something the other night that was a riff, and I had a good friend of mine who's not a comedian, but just like a pretty smart, savvy person came up after to me and said, we loved the me and my boyfriend loved this line. Like, and I was like, oh, that was a throwaway. And I was like, I guess I should keep that. And then two nights later, I did it again, and it didn't get a laugh, which doesn't mean the joke's out. Yeah. It just means like you kind of keep playing <laughs> with it, but. It's not the audience's fault, obviously, but I always want to say to them, well, they loved it last night. I know. <laughs> I uh, I don't like people who say that it's the audience's fault, because I think it's like, you didn't connect. You yeah, know, I don't th- think... that's basically, or the ener- your energy, or something about, I think it's, for me, it's a connection issue at the beginning sometimes, if they're yeah. not laughing. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't <clears> think <throat> it's like... I don't think it's ever really the audience's fault because mm-hmm. I don't think most of the time audiences came there and were like, I wanted to have a bad time. You they know? want you to do good. Usually, I think I hope. <laughs> some rooms are like hotter than others. Like some people are more, or some circumstances make it easier for people to get into it and laugh. But I don't think of it as being like the audience's fault. No, I don't like to think that way. Yeah. I listen to, I always record my sets and there was like one long plane flight I had and I was listening to sets that were so old 
I was almost like listening to them like I wasn't me because I'd forgotten <laughs> them. And I really understood the audience even better because I was, I laughed where they laughed. Like I was amused by me at the similar places <laughs> they were. And then I was also like, ah, oh, something about that didn't just, like when they didn't laugh, it didn't surprise me because I was like, yeah, I didn't feel like laughing at that either. So it really kind of validated their wisdom when I sort of like listened to myself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like, I do you ever like have a joke you liked and then you forget about it and then you go back to a notebook and you're like, that joke did really good. And I, I like, it somehow slowly siphoned out of your set and you went on to other, oh, yeah. like slowly went into another set. Like, here's the old joke. And you just, that happens all the time for me. I don't know why. I'm like, I didn't work on this one. It's so good. People laughed at it. Yeah, I think it's just easy to like, I don't know why you get fixated on some other than others, but just to forget a joke, either because you get bored with it or it's not, like, as relevant to Maybe it's your like life feeling. in that moment. Yeah. yeah. But there's some that were, like, medium laughs or, you know, I could have, I don't know. I'm, I'll go, you can always go back to them, obviously. Yeah. Um. So, like, what places have, what do you, are you, like, I'm a vegan. Mm-hmm. Um, are you, do you do any, like, you eat meat, vegan, like, you don't have to say you're vegan or anything like that. <laughs> um, I'm not vegan. I've, like, I've played around with different diets just to figure out what works the best with my body mm-hmm. because I don't have a great stomach and I'm also always trying to, like, keep my weight in check and I have insulin problems and stuff like that. Oh. So I have almost haven't gone the vegan vegetarian route because I've, like, got so many other things I need to be on top of. Oh, my but, gosh. Like, yeah. Um... And and the future and I, I respect them as diets, especially if people feel like they work for them or they're better for the planet. You know, go do you. I totally respect it. But I I wanted it to be the answer. Like I tried cutting out meat a couple of times because I was like, oh maybe I'll digest great if I'm just not dealing with meat. And then I was like even worse. So I was like, oh, never no. mind. I think it could be blood type too. I'm fascinated like. by that. Yeah, yeah I read I that thing, type. and I well, I think I forget what my blood type added up as. Um, so I try to eat healthy. Because I just like. Well, we're, drink, we're both drinking Lacroix, by the way. Yeah. Lacroix, do you want to sponsor this podcast? We're both. <laughs> you have. I have orange. I have tangerine. You have passion fruit. Yeah, we're drinking Lacroix. Yeah. I take a Lacroix sponsorship any day. Yeah. Because, <laughs> mm-hmm. like, I think you said you've gone. I go through a whole like package. You said you have a package. Oh yeah, I bought some at my. I bought some for my hotel room, um, at like the Target next door. Mm-hmm. And I went through like a whole giant thing, and I'm not used That's to this giant. like Arizona. <laughs> yeah, and like a yeah, I would just like go back to my hotel room, and like I don't have HBO at home, so I would just like watch <laughs> HBO and pound the choir. Oh wow, <laughs> That's really how you. It's funny. I'm not like that huge a partier, and I was eating um like a little chocolate bar in bed, uh, oh, but I it's like that. the dark chocolate ninety yeah. percent. While we're talking about being healthy, um, yeah. But of course, I like made a weird mess of just like little crumbs and chocolate slivers and I think it's fine I think we can just bleach the duvet I think they're prepared for that kind of thing but I was like how embarrassed are you going to be if you get like a charge later on in your room for like <laughs> getting chocolate, chocolate all over the duvet it's like a little <laughs> tiny spot it's like a Kathy cartoon of of hotel fees she's like Argh. what does she do like Argh. yeah or like blar <laughs> I much rather get like charged for like Trashing the hotel room, you know, while oh, I'm on geez, tour and doing get charged. Cool. Yeah, rather than like, oh, um, you were eating chocolate in the bed every night. Three hundred dollars <laughs> for a new duvet. <laughs> we can't bleach it. We don't know bleaches here in Arizona. <laughs> so you can't handle the weather. You said like the weather's like like slightly hot. Like slightly hot. It was like ninety seven <laughs> yesterday. I mean, when I get in really hot weather, I get really like disorientated. <laughs> Like, I feel like I'm, like, just a little bit walking around slow. Yeah. If someone tries to... Ugh, I got pulled over by a cop because I... Here? Yeah, this is the... What? Other, yes, my first night here, it was so... I drove seven hours it took me to get here. Then I had, like, an hour to get to my hotel room, shower change, get to my show. So, you know, when you're using, like, navigation things and you're in a place you don't know, sometimes you're like, whoa, you meant that left or that right? Yeah. And you're suddenly... Yeah. So, I merged... You know how, like, the exits on the interstate, they make that, like, V. Yeah. So I crossed the lines of the V, which is apparently illegal uh, here. Just because I, I didn't know. realize, like, I needed to take that exit until, like, you know, a little bit. People do it all the time here, just so you know. <laughs> yeah. So I got pulled over, and I was like, what is happening? I was like, I don't think I'm speeding. And it was, like, such a dramatic pullover because then he wanted to, like, get off the interstate and pull over a second time and go find a parking lot. And he had to do all this paperwork. And it was, like, 20 minutes ordeal. But 
<laughs> he and luckily I just got a warning, so it wasn't that awful. But I just was like, I'm sorry, man, it's hot and I'm confused. <laughs> and I've been getting like honked at more than usual. I'm not a bad driver, but I don't know if it's just because I'm in a place I don't know or Arizona. So that's my, you were asking who's my dick of the week. Mm -hmm. I'd say it's mm -hmm. either me or the other Arizona drivers because I'm just <laughs> hearing a lot it's of honks. It's the heat. It's, it's the heat. <laughs> But are you used to it? Did you grow up here? Uh, I grew up here. Yeah, I was born in Phoenix at the Stevie Nicks Hospital. What? There's a Stevie Nicks Hospital? That's so I mean, cool. It's I mean, it's called. It's called Good Samaritan. Oh, but she was, was, she was born there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. So, like, but I'm used to it. But it's still, like, I remember I took the bus for so many years. Like, mm -hmm. you know, the city bus. And, yeah, it was pretty hot. Like, walking during the day, I'd wear, like, have an umbrella. Because yeah. I didn't want to get tan. As a kid, I was swimming all the time. Yeah. But um, as you get older, you're, like, in an office that's ice cold. Yeah. So, you know, you're not outside or you're yeah. in your car. So it's, like, you don't even – like, summer just comes and goes. But, yeah, you feel like if I just go outside, it feels a little slow. I will say in Pasadena, though, that shit is hot. Like Oh, so that's hot to you when you go out and Yeah. Pasadena. I mean, North Hollywood's kind of hot, I noticed. Yeah. Like, pres I, pa I went to, like, Donut Friend in Pasadena. Like, it's my favorite place. And, like, yeah. just – I parked, like, a block or two away and I walked. And I'm, like, fuck, what? park yeah. like why did yeah. I park a few blocks away I'm like oh get me the donuts <laughs> like yeah I can't decide if it's sometimes it feels almost healing like I'm in a spa or something oh, like humid like, do you think and oh I mean just heat oh just heat like in Arizona like I isn't mm -hmm. isn't this place known for being like kind of like a healing place when Sedona yeah <laughs> yeah like when people's lives fall apart or they go to rehab or something they come oh you're like, right uh yeah well, Harvey Weinstein's in Wickenburg <laughs> Oh, so which is just like you know North Phoenix, like on the way to Flagstaff, and you go know. left. No, I didn't know he's hiding out here. Yeah, I think he was in a hospital. Uh, not a hospital, not Stevie Nicks Hospital, but Scottsdale. <laughs> That's different. He was in Scottsdale at a restaurant. I read an article a few months ago. I think somebody came up and slapped him. If I were him, I'm glad I'd go to like a foreign country. I'd go to the end of the world. Just go to Mars. Like, you can help us. No, don't populate Mars. Do you want? Do we want him populating Mars? I don't think. So. No, I don't think we. But. Mm -hmm. That I hadn't thought about terraforming it. Um, what had happened to him. I had thought about like what was up with Aziz because yeah, I just hadn't like it was such a huge like everybody talking about it came one. out and then it was just sort of like like I don't know if his shows have been canceled or if you know um, yeah that was a weird article to read like did you read that article or the, did you see read everything about it? Oh yeah, I read I read that article and then I was like voraciously devouring like. All the different think pieces on it. I was very quiet on it myself. Like, I didn't publicly really post on Facebook or write anything about it. But I was very interested in everyone else's perspective. And yeah. I was, after the shows last night, I was home watching um, SNL. And they did a sketch about uh, it just being this terrifying dinner party where somebody brought it up. because it's Oh, just, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is that. so right, divisive yeah, that, that everyone's yeah. like, I don't. And so now I feel like that person because I'm like on your podcast. And I'm like, what's the deal with that? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> Let me bring up the most divisive. Is there anything you can say that's right? Because um, the whole the whole sketch is I'm just going like, oh, oh I start oh. to have this opinion, but it's about this. But like, I'm I like, mean, look at this bear. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like changing the subject, <laughs> yeah. right? Anything I say could definitely like really hurt someone or be problematic or be taken in the wrong direction. And like, anyway, um, but I, I do think that's fascinating. Like what happens to people who sort of like, been publicly um called out shamed discarded like maybe they're not officially in jail but their kind of name is mud right now like yeah, yeah. where do they Let's go hang out <laughs> yeah yeah like, well speaking of we can go into the news article thing mm. that you have so you oh, this is the cosby thing yes so uh, so i heard like it wasn't a day when i was watching maybe it was the day i drove over here so i was in the car all day it wasn't a day where i really had access to the news mm -hmm. and then i heard that he was convicted yeah and uh, also sentenced which is fascinating because I just personally still don't expect to see rich, powerful celebrities actually get sentenced. Like, I, like we live in a society where in the past I think it's been so easy if they're powerful enough, even if we kind of all figure they did it, yeah. it's somehow there's some loophole where it doesn't happen. So if they're you actually, immune or something. Yeah, they're, they're, they do feel very untouchable. So if he actually goes to jail, which it seems like he really could at this point, that's fascinating. And then... So then I went on Twitter and was just scrolling through. So I saw this link to this article 
Cosby has expletive ridden tirade um, in court. I'm not surprised. <laughs> and this is what I fascinates me about it is I think so many people, particularly in our show business world, have like a shadow secret side. And my experience with it has been less extreme than a Cosme thing, but just that there'll be somebody who's like is super talented and can and is like a super nice person most of the time. But especially with men, like you have your own little story of like that creepy weird thing they did to you once or like if you've gotten to know them or date them you've seen like this terrible temper they have and I've had like a couple experiences where I've just seen the dark side of a person that you would think was so charming lovely if you just knew them you know so to me that was like Cosby's like in a in a small way to hear that he like I was like ooh the mask is dropping so anyway then I uh, I googled what he said and I got like two different articles about it that said different things, but that basically they were worried about his bail. Um, and so, uh, uh, one of them made more sense than the other one. Um, uh, the outburst came moments after Cosby was convicted of drugging and molesting a woman, uh, in the first big celebrity trial of Me Too era. It doesn't matter that I have a plane, a-hole, Cosby yelled at District Attorney Kevin Steele following a request to revoke bail due to Cosby's unlimited wealth. I'm sick of him, Cosby shouted. So I'll do that again. Yeah. So it was basically they were talking about his bail and him being a flight risk, and somebody was like, well, he has a plane, which is kind of hilarious when we're talking about whether or not um, a felon or whatever you want to call him is a flight risk, to be like, well, he does own his own private plane, so quite literally... um, but, yeah, just, so basically, yeah, he called somebody an a-hole in court. I wanted it to be even more. I wanted it to be, like, a full-blown meltdown. Just, like, like expletives for, like, sentences, right? Like, yeah. can't a-hole, blah, like, all yeah. that stuff. So I think it was one of those times where the headline kind of plumped it up a little bit, like, because I was ready to, like, you know, hear that Cosby just, like, just went nuts. It just still sounds like, like ripped his tiny hairs out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> his gray hair. You know what? What was weird about this thing? Like, like okay. So his defense was like kind of nanny nanny. I, I read what his like. I heard and read mm-hmm. what his defense was saying, and they're kind of nanny nanny boo booing it. Like they're saying some terrible things. I forgot what they said because I don't have the art. I don't have yeah. anything pulled up. But they were saying things that I'm like, oh, he's guilty. Like the way you guys are defending him, he's definitely guilty whether you know the attorney's supposed to believe him that he's yeah. not of course but they're saying a lot of like well you know if you weren't there like that kind of thing like yeah uh you just oh she's just a woman she's trying to get money like that kind of stuff i'm like all right he's guilty like yeah and then i remember keenan thompson from SN- saturday night live not S- mm-hmm. snl yeah. <laughs> um, i think a few like a year or two ago he did he was hanging with cosby and he saw him do something that was kind of questionable and he mentioned it you know, when he start Cosby started getting, like, mm-hmm. women, yeah, yeah. like, coming forward, and he, like, talked about it. He did something that was questionable, but Keena was saying, when I saw him do that, I was like, yeah, this guy has done some weird shit with women, probably. Like, Did he <laughs> drug remember them what or... the questionable thing was? <laughs> no, I, I don't remember. I just remember reading it or watching it a few mm-hmm. years ago. Because I think a few years ago is when the women started coming forward, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been going on for a while. Like, what, 80 women yeah. <laughs> or something? Or was it Harvey Weinstein, 80 women? Both of them 80 women? I don't know. Yeah, I think it was, like, he was hanging out with them after a show, and he just saw something, he saw him do something with some yeah. woman, like, a, the, or t- talk in a certain yeah. way, like, Trump, kind of like, he may have said something like the Trump, how Trump said grabbing pussy. Mm-hmm. He may have said something like that, and he's like, mm. That's not a good sign. Yeah, <laughs> yeah pulling his collar, yeah. like, Keenan's like, ugh, I don't know. Yeah. Um, and then... What bothered me is that Cosby doesn't like Wanda Sykes. It's always bothered me. Really? Has he publicly said anything? Yeah, at an award show a few years ago. I just thought that was weird. That hurt me. It didn't. This doesn't affect me at all, Like, except that she's a woman. But for some reason, it bothered me they didn't like her. I thought she was, like, funny, so... Yeah, can I just, in support of Wanda Sykes for a minute, yeah. first of all, she's hilarious. Yeah. You know, I've been watching her since I was a kid, and I've seen her live a bunch in L.A., because she lives in L.A., and I actually met her the other night, because she was on what? a friend show of mine, and I talked to her for a little bit. Couldn't have been a nicer, funner, just oh. 
great person to hang out with. So, I mean, even not having met her, I still would have thought, how could you think of it? How could you have anything bad to say about Wanda Sykes? And then especially having met her, I'm like... Because she's too smart for Cosby and she's lesbian, right? (laughs) Is that why? (laughs) I mean, no, but I agree with you. Like, there's something, like, about, like... She sees through bullshit. (laughs) Yeah, maybe. Like, I mean, I'm curious, like, what he said or if they had some... Maybe she was on to him the whole time before women came forward. Yeah, I mean, maybe she... I mean, he probably felt challenged by her in some way. Or she's walked into something yeah. he was doing anyway, yeah. yeah 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 there's certain people where i'm like how could you have a problem or beef with them that also john be- mulaney or maria bamford i don't know if anyone who has a beef with them but those are people that if someone had a beef with them i'd be like why yeah i'd be like this <laughs> what? yeah this probably says something really red flaggy about although, you although john mulaney has a beef with well not really a beef but like i a funny article was like a few weeks ago he mm-hmm. had his wife has a crush on timothy chalamet something and so like he has it in this uh the seth rogan stand-up special on netflix where it's a bunch of celebrities doing stand-up um well comedians mm-hmm. stand up. he was just going off on how like sh- she has a crush on timothy chalamet and then she completely forgot and he like brought it up again and he's like i think it's something about height is funny yeah. um did you see that yeah i do remember seeing that yeah i just think that's i don't know why because i saw call me by your name and by the way my DVD player on my mm-hmm. on my uh, computer now doesn't work after watching that movie, but it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> the last Did movie. you just call me by your name stuck inside no, your computer? No, no, but I took it out. Now I can't play anything else, and I think it's like my laptop is a male and it's trying to come out. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's like, just too many feelings. It just many, broke its little heart. That movie, it's like, oh, it's like, I was like, for a day, I was just in a trance. I watched it twice. Um, you watched it too? Okay, so this is my... Okay. I feel so chagrined. I have only seen half of it. I got the screener because... Of, I have a, I got the free screener because I'm yeah. part of SAG. And I watched the first half of it and loved it. And then, like, had to... Had to go be somewhere. Like, had a show or something or couldn't finish it then. And then, like... And it wasn't because I didn't really like it. I think it was just sort of, like... Maybe because it, it does have something so, like, pulls at something inside of you about it. or so, like, like, love. Like, just, like, falling yeah. in love again, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, that I was, like, and, yeah, I think I've been feeling a little sensitive when it comes to love stuff lately. Yeah. That I just wasn't ever, and it's totally something I'm planning on finishing, especially now that I've had multiple conversations the last couple of days. But it wasn't something where I ever was, like, let me put put, put it back in and oh, finish okay. this yeah. chapter. Like, you just, you, you just hadn't. You know how some movies you're like, well, it's got to be a day I plan on crying. It's I gotta, have, I gotta, be, I gotta have a crying <laughs> yeah. plan. Yeah, like I haven't seen Lady Bird yet. I don't know how that's gonna go. I liked it. Did you cry or anything? I don't. I probably teared up a little bit just because I always tear up a little bit, especially I saw it in theaters and it's really big in your face. It's yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like the surround yeah. sound gets you. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, ah, no. <laughs> um, well, speaking of. Uh, Let's see. You mentioned you're in SAG. I know a lot of, some people get forced into SAG. Did you have to get forced into joining SAG? Yes and no. It was like I'd worked two jobs that were SAG, and then the, I didn't have to join yet, but the third one I was going to have to join. But this is actually hilarious. Uh, There's a, I don't think she's on Real Housewives anymore, but she has my name, and my Thompson is an unusual spelling, and she also has that unusual spelling. (sighs) And there's a, Reality TV shows don't necessarily have to join SAG after. Like, I looked for information about it, and I just found confusing results. But basically, I knew she was going to be on the upcoming season. And if somebody signs up for the union before you with your name, you can't sign up with your name. Like, you, that's... Shit. Like, that's why Michael J. Fox is Michael J. Fox, because but. somebody else was Michael Fox. Uh, so, mm. I was... The less famous guy. Yeah, the guy who, like, well... <laughs> you just, like, dropped out. <laughs> yeah. So, I was... And, I, like, my name at that point mattered to me because I had, you know, five or so years of doing stand-up with that name behind me. So, the idea of, like, having to change it. So, I kind of panicked and went and joined SAG. Oh, um, okay. I didn't know that. SAG after because I was worried that she would have to join for Real Housewives and then take our... And then be the one who had our name. And, um... Anyway, but I haven't really, I didn't really need to because I haven't done SAG work since then. Uh-huh. So I feel like I was kind of forced, but not by the unions, more by... Because they will, like, pester you, right? If, to get, if, you, if you've done too many productions that are SAG, they'll be, like, sending you letters, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, it comes down to, like, a, you have to join, yeah. But, no. I know some people who aren't ready, and they're, like, like my, a few, you know, like, I had a friend here who joined, I don't know why, because, yeah. like, she can't really, there's some SAG stuff out here, but not, mm-hmm. like, my agent SAG, well, I'm not, I haven't re-signed with. 
Yeah. But they're, they're still sending me stuff. That's cool. But, uh, yeah, like, I know, like, someone who had to join who didn't really want to, you know, it was just, like, annoying. Like, when, especially you don't have the money. And I think you can pay in five hundred dollar installments or something. Yeah, I mean, it's. I think the unions are great because the actors really do need some kind of protection. Yeah. Because I think there's something the about benefits. our. There's something about the dynamic with actors where we're just so vulnerable and so willing to like just work for nothing. Like sometimes yeah. British comedians <laughs> have a union too because it's so it's so easy for performers if you're not in a position of power to be like, oh yeah, I'll pay you. I'll drive two hours. I'll I'll, I'll work in like a yeah. hundred degree of weather with no snacks or no breaks. No air, air conditioning. But it is tricky because I think if you're at that level where you're not successful that, that successful yet, then it, it becomes a hardship to need to join and pay the dues yeah. and pay the initiation. So it's kind of like a... It, it, I think it's a want... Like I pay dues all the time Every year, even though I'm not working. Is it a thousand? What is it? Oh no, no, it's like two hundred a year. But okay. it's still kind of like oh this. Yeah. So <laughs> and you like can like renewing your tags on your license plate. <laughs> yeah, it's like you can you can sort of fill out like a financial hardship. Like let's say I had like a serious ailment and couldn't work or something. I think I could have my dues waived. But if I was just, I don't think I can go in the office and go. It's just not going well. Can I, you know, like, I don't have an agent right now. Yeah. <laughs> can I just be put on... You can't do that, so it's complicated. I mean, eventually, they can... You can just, like, not renew, right? Oh, yeah. Well, okay. But you that's just, a... Is it a bitch to do that? <laughs> I don't I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I don't, there's a lot of stuff I don't know. Like, I'm just learning all the time. Um, uh, okay, I'll talk about, like, the news thing. We're, just, we're kind of bouncing around. This is fun. It's just, like, going a path of least resistance for, like, whatever you mention. I'll just go off on that. But, uh, um, as far as comedians again, um, what about that state dinner? Michelle Wolf. Oh, yeah. I saw, like, a couple minutes of that last night. Um, I mean, <laughs> I thought it was funny. I think Sarah Huckabee Sanders is really good at her job. I kind of miss Sean Spicer because he was so bad at it. Like, yeah. Because you should. He thought it was a disgrace. Uh, but, of course they did because she really went after her. I mean, and I, I'm not saying that critically. Like I thought it was kind of badass, but I mean, she really because you know the correspondence dinner can go a couple. There's like gentle, I like you ribbing, and then there's like I'm flat your face. Out, <laughs> I'm flat out telling you I think you're a terrible person. Joking, and I felt like it was more that. Uh, but well, here's some things she said. Um, she said. Uh, she loves, uh, this is Wolf, uh, Michelle Wolf to Sanders, Sarah Sanders, Huckabee. Um, I love you as Aunt Lydia in Handmaid's Tale. I mean, that, (laughs) they look alike. Wow. They do, and they have a similar, like, scowl. Yeah. Weird, like, downturn of the mouth. Um, uh, and then she also said... I actually really like Sarah. I think she's very resourceful, but she burns facts, and then she uses that ash to create a perfect smoky eye. So that's really a compliment, if you think about it. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's lies. It's probably lies. Well, there now it's not a compliment. Yeah, anymore. exactly. That's like, it's pretty <laughs> sick burn. She basically just calls her a liar. Um, let's see. And, yeah, she probably just tore into her, like, uh, somebody mentioned she tore into her, like, appearance. Yeah, it says uh, the press... Uh, you know, Sarah, Sarah Sanders um, sat and absorbed intense criticism of her physical appearance, her job performance, and so forth. And it's, instead of walking out on national television, you know, she just sat there. That's what somebody tweeted. Whoever Maggie Haberman mm-hmm. is. I don't know who that is. Is that New York Times? She's in New York Times. Sorry, Maggie. All right. Um, not that she listens to this. Anyway, um, let's see. Some people thought it was unfunny. Um, what is looking at this? Despicable behavior. Ugh. Of course, like, Trump never goes. He always, uh, well, I'm going to read this in a second, but Trump never goes to these things. He's always telling his, like, employees to go. Uh, Kumail, what did he say? They call you. So Kumail Nanjiani said, they call you liars, they call... Mexicans rapists, they call Muslims murderers, they support white supremacists, but someone calls them out on what they do and suddenly they're heroes for not walking out. Oh. Well, that's a good perspective, Kumail. Yeah. I mean, Kumail's a pretty smart. If anything comes out about him, I'm going to be pissed. No, I don't think so. (laughs) If anything like Aziz comes out about him, I'm not going to be happy. Um... 
So somebody else said, uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders works for, lies for, a guy accused of sexuality, sexually assaulting more than a dozen women, one of whom he suggested he couldn't have assaulted because she wasn't good-looking enough, yet we're supposed to have pity, a pity party for Sarah Huckabee Sanders because of the White House roast? Really? Yeah. So... I guess we're just going, I guess like maybe Michelle Wolf was just going by looks since that's all Trump cares about. I mean, she didn't, uh, unless I'm missing some part of it, she didn't really say anything super nasty about her looks. It's not like she was like. Just I the mean, smoky eye one thing was the only thing. And the smoky okay. eye thing, I mean, well, she's cute. really kind of cute. It's kind of cute. Well, she's not saying that her smoky eye looks bad. She's just, it's more like a, it's more like smoke. a setup so she can make a punchline about her integrity. Smoke and mirrors, like. Like lies. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the punchline isn't really about her looks; it's about her integrity. So, mm. she, to me, she didn't really go after her go after her looks. Um, I mean, it's not like she was like making fun of her weight or you know yeah, like, calling her obvious, ugly or anything. Obvious things. <laughs> um, I mean, like Sarah Huckabee Sanders, like that's a fascinating one just to know. What do you know about her? I don't know a lot. I about don't know her. anything about her. Look, I think she's. Huckabee name. She something. seems like almost like made of steel and yeah. kind of unflappable, but I do wonder just like she could be a weird Marvel character, like a weird like Marvel, like a weird X-Men character maybe. Um maybe a bad one. Yeah, like I kind of hate her because I <laughs> I just don't agree with so much of what's happening over there, yeah. but I also sort of like am fascinated by her like unflappability. If yeah. that makes sense, because, like, you know, when you saw Spicer, like, having a meltdown in that high-pressure situation, and then you see her walk in and like, just sort of be like, okay. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and what does it feel like to be a woman in Trump circle, and, like, what are you rationalizing? What are you lying to yourself about? What are yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like, and, like, so steel and so steel, like, just yeah. so blue, uh, like, ice cold. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, what does she, like, walk into when she walks back there, and they're like... Or he's, you know, trying to tell her not to mention things or, like, I wonder, I wonder if she does still think, say things wrong and she goes back there and they yell at her, like, you said this wrong and, you know what I mean? Because I think with Spicer they would criticize, they would, you know, criticize what he said or something, like, because he had an interview with Colbert where he talked about, like, what, or it was Kimmel or Colbert, we had an interview, like, what he talked about, like, what would happen after the... Mm-hmm. After the press, oh, like he would go backstage and get yelled at, basically, or something. Yeah, yeah, like you need to say something this way, and well, and I don't know if you ever had someone in your stand-up life who was like harsh about notes, but that usually only makes you worse out there. Like if you're leaving the stage and you're getting, you know, pressure or negative feedback, I feel like it only makes you like way more nervous when you have to walk back out. Yeah, like someone criticizing your jokes to me, like a comedian, like when you walk off. Is that what you mean? Or just anything, like director, any director, manager, peers. Oh, you like, know what I mean? Like, or even I, a play you're in. I, or something. Yeah, I don't tend to shine. I mean, like, constructive criticism can be great, but I don't tend to shine yeah. when I'm yeah. in an environment where, like, I'm doing something kind of nerve wracking, and then I walk backstage, and people are like, "You should have done it this way." And yeah, this way, and this you fucked up, and it's like that'd be the worst manager ever. <laughs> yeah, so it's like to me, it always kind of made sense that he looked like he was about to have a meltdown. Yeah, because he's going to get, like, you know, some director's notes, or he's getting them currently, or he was, or something. Yeah. Yeah, I think, like, bad, like, negativity makes you do worse, especially if there's no, like, um, a constructive is good, because it's, like, criticism is, is good, because um, they usually give suggestions, right, on uh, constructive criticism. It's not really, like, personal, but, like, negative criticism is, like... You know, well, I don't like your face. And it's like, well, what can I change? You're like, I don't know. And then it's like, walk away. Mm-hmm. I hate that. Um, my, I grew up, like, I feel like I grew up in a family like that. So that's fun. Did you grow up in a family like that? Um, oh, where they were bad about constructive consider- criticism? Yeah. Uh, I, this, hmm. I don't know. I mean, sometimes I think there was the hurt feelings. But then other times, you know... Um, I think I think it depends on the day, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like how they're feeling, or <laughs> I don't know. I think we're all better at um, how we choose to communicate something from day to day. You know, like some days we know how to be real diplomats, and then other yeah. days we're not. Yeah, that's true. Depending on like if it's hot outside, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like <laughs> like how many like fights have you been in because you were like hot or hungry? 
Um, I haven't like I haven't actually I haven't had a shouting match ever with anyone. Have you had shouting matches with anyone? Yeah. yeah. Oh shit, you're badass. Like <laughs> not none of my boyfriends I've had shouting matches with. I think there's like a kid in like elementary school I may have shouted yeah. at. Yeah. Or like at the babysitter. Yeah. But I don't know why. I've never I get snooty. I get yeah. like well, I don't you know, like that. Yeah. But um it takes a lot like I'm always like Moody just being by myself. <laughs> like, I don't know. That like kinda like, oh man, I wish I would done it this way or you know, like yeah. criticizing yourself and stuff. Um oh I wanna talk about your style of comedy. Uh I saw you a few months ago when you were at Tosos. Like I think you're with uh your other friend. Kelly uh, Kelly and my friendly. Yeah. Yeah. Um I'm trying to remember which venue Tosos is. It's like super north, like I-17, and it's like a bar. Um, oh, is it like a huge room and there's a stage? Yeah, a lot of tables going lengthwise yes, towards the stage. Yes, totally remember Tosos now, yeah. I liked your set because, like, I don't know, like, how would you, ex- I don't want to put you on the spot, <laughs> how would you explain your comedy so people listening? Uh, I, very personal, very autobiographical, um... Very, like, feelings-orientated. Um, yeah. I think I've heard myself described as intense. Um, theatrical? I've forgotten that yeah. description, too, before. It was a little more quirky for me. A little I bit loved quirky. it. Because everyone else goes up there, and, like, they're cool and chill. And they're like, yeah, so I don't have a boyfriend. You know, like, like mm-hmm. and then yours is, like, like different. And I just loved it. I don't know. I can't Thank explain you. it. It was, like... Uh, I think I just like that. Like, I like Maria Bamford. I mm-hmm. like, uh, like, Emo Phillips. And I like Kermit. And <laughs> I like Kermit, Kermit like, too. He's holding my LaCroix <laughs> right now. <laughs> I put this tie on him. Yeah. It's from my dad. I wish he was a puppet. He's not just, you know, no. Um, yeah, so I really like that. And uh, when did you, like, start... Maybe you get asked this before, but when did you start doing... Comedy, like, what, like, made you go into it? Was it gradual? Uh, sort of. I mean, so I started, uh, I did a ton of theater growing up. I mean, just, like, community theater. Um, Cool. And then I came out to L.A. because I just knew I wanted to do something performance-wise, but it hadn't crystallized into, like, exactly what that was. And I did improv classes and sketch classes and stand-up and... um, and stand-up was something that really stuck. I still love acting and kind of want to sort of push myself to be doing more of it. But uh, so stand-up was just sort of like, it was such a guaranteed way to get to perform and be creative every night. Because you know, like, you can just go find an open mic and sign up. Mm-hmm. And book shows are a little trickier because somebody kind of has to say yes to you. But still, you can, like, write to people and hustle. Yeah. And if you're doing a good job, those will come. And acting was just trickier because it was kind of harder to get in the room with the people I needed to get in the room with. And then there was always like, well, your performance was great, but we need somebody who looks X, Y, Z or has a, yeah, and then like stand- I fucking hate that. Yeah. You can <laughs> never be wrong for your own stand up set. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's you. Yeah. Um, so that was, I, so it was like 12 and a half years ago when I first moved to LA and, and I just kind of started dipping my toe in and I did a class and I started going to open mics and just sort of naturally became a part of me, and I haven't gone more than a week or two without doing it since then. Have, do your family, does your family from Maine, if they're still there, do they come out to L.A. to see any of your shows? Or do you go out there and do shows? They're up in Seattle now. I used to go see oh, them cool. uh, in Maine, and there's, like, a little comedy scene there and do a little bit. Oh, cute. Uh, and I loved going to visit Maine because it was, like, such a break and opposite from L.A. Mm-hmm. And then my brother and his wife moved to Seattle, had a baby. My parents followed them. So now the whole crew is there. And Seattle's a really great city that has a really yeah. great comedy scene, too. But uh, it's also just not, like, the vacation <laughs> thing that Maine is. So I usually go see them just because they're all clustered together and there's just, it's easier for me to travel than... It's closer. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like, an hour or two away. Yeah. It's um, flight. My mom and dad will come down and visit me occasionally, but usually when they come visit, they just come for, like, a night or two and I don't have a bunch of shows. So usually when they see me, they see me up in Seattle. Okay. And is there anyone in Maine you go see? Do you still go there just for the hell of it? No. Aww. Yeah. I mean, like, I have a few high school friends that I would have lunch with if I was going to be in Maine, but that I wouldn't necessarily fly out just to stay with or see. Yeah. 
What was your favorite spot in Maine as far as like coffee shop or tea or like a diner or I don't know what's out there? What's out there? Uh, <laughs> like, I mean, my raccoons. <laughs> I mean, I love going to the beach. That's like the thing I miss the most. And beaches oh, cool. in Maine are so different from say yeah. like beaches in LA because especially if it's not summertime, like if it's spring or fall or something. You know, you need to wear a sweatshirt or whatever, but you can go and be almost the only person on a beach. And there's something yeah. about, like, the calm and the comfort of a beach combined with, like, not having anyone around that's just sort of, It's like, like a meditation app. Yeah, but, like, it's, right it's, exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's the like calm the app. Thing. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the hardest adjustment for me about L.A. is that I grew up on, like, 40 acres in the middle of nowhere in Maine and then used to go be able to sit on the beach by myself. And now it's like I find myself in like a Trader Joe's parking lot where two people look like they're about to get in a fight over the last parking spot left. And I'm yeah. like, that's eh, too much. Yeah. Um, like I grew up in, I grew up here. So it's like yeah. I'm always used to like people around. But Mesa's kind of like small town feeling. Yeah, I get that vibe. Um, which is kind of weird because I know it's not like a small town. But um, at, yeah, I haven't grown up. I, I go, I went up to like the woods a lot, you know, in here because like we have a lot of yeah. woods. But I want to go to Maine. Like, I, I want to, because it's near Canada. Does everyone speak, like, Canadian? Mm-hmm. Like, do they go A? Like, <laughs> it's the accent's a little similar, not quite the same. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're more like the New England, like, wicked oh, yeah. pissa. You can't get that from here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, like, you really relate to the movie Ted. And, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> or, like, like, Family Guy or something. Do you like, do you, is there, do you have a favorite show that is, is it Family Guy? No. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> like, what's your favorite show? Oh, God. I'm not good at just picking one. Top five. And I'm always into... But when I get into shows, they tend to be more like dramas than comedy. I mean, there's some okay, comedies yeah. I love. Like, I love Baskets. I think that's really Baskets. original. And I love just, like, the classic sitcom. Like, I love Modern Family. I love The Office. I'm enjoying yeah. the Roseanne reboot. Um, oh, yeah. But I also, like... When I want to unwind, sometimes I don't want to go anywhere near comedy because that's work. So I'll get really yeah. into, like, the hour dramas. Like, I got into the G- the assassination of Gianni Versace. What? I gotta watch that! Yeah. What? Yeah. Was it good? Yeah. I mean, that's, like, I like that stuff, though. Oh, like my that, gosh! Like, kind of true crime, sort of over the top. It's like fashion bit. meets crime. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> meets, like, CSI or yeah. meets, whatever, Law & Order. yeah. Um, is there any casting out in Maine? Like, was there any casting? We did community theater, you did. Yeah. Was there any, like, big casting director person? Uh, out, any no, agents out there? No. Um, you know how everyone was, like, posting their old headshots online recently? Yeah. So I did, and it made a friend of mine from high school start reminiscing. And we once, she was the one I found out about it, went to audition for this indie film and have, like, one line. Neither one of us got it, and I don't know if the movie got made even. But yeah, It seems like, like, like you're the only time. ones in that town like auditioning is that where it was no, <laughs> okay I mean, like Portland actually is a pretty big city that has a lot of people oh yeah Portland yeah. um so it's like you I mean certainly it's not as competitive as like certain other places but no I feel like there's always plenty of people around who want to perform okay there are yeah. okay that's cool are there a lot of is there a lot of renaissance festival or Shakespeare type people there I would think, or maybe not. I don't know about Renaissance Festival, but I do think they have, like, Shakespeare in the Park and, like, a pretty oh. active theater scene. Mm. Yeah. What's your favorite Muppet? Miss Piggy. Miss, yes. Oh, you look like her right now. <laughs> like, the blonde. Like, wait, you just, she just took her hair out of the clip, and I'm like, oh, the way it's sitting. I get it. No, I love Miss Piggy so much. Like, And I love Kermit, but I almost have, like, a weird beef with Kermit because I'm like... He doesn't deserve her. Like, I consider, like, Kermit, like, the commitment-phobic fuckboy who kind of, like, <laughs> drags Miss Pissy, big Miss Piggy. She's pissy sometimes. Her, <laughs> strings her heart along and, like, doesn't, I you know. know. Didn't you, like, break up with her before that TV show that got canceled that they were on recently? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of their, like, running bit now, yeah. so I get it. But it's, yeah, I have, like, a, I relate to her a lot, but also just kind of adore her. Oh, I have a gift for you, then. Hold on, stay right there. Let's see if I can find it. Let me see. Oh, yeah, you're going to love this. This is going to, this is my gift to you for being on the podcast. That's so sweet. It's a ring, and it has Miss Piggy's face on it. That's perfect. Thank you. I mean, it's probably for a kid. Yeah, Pinky probably just fits in her pinky. I think mine, too. Oh, no, it's great, though. She's got (laughs) solid hair and makeup, solid outfits, always on Miss Piggy. I know. She's a pretty Muppet, or, yeah. uh, she's actually a pig in real life, everybody. You know that. (laughs) Um, Miss Piggy. Um, Just kidding. Who's your favorite Muppet? Oh, gosh. I think, gosh, it was probably, like, <laughs> Fozzie Bear or something. Like, one of those. Um, 
I have a few. I like Snapple Look, I guess. Uh, I have so many. Um, let's see if there's like just one. I did have, I used to have a garland hanging right there in my doorway. And I, used, I made like little, I like the little, mm -hmm. uh, you can buy like fluff from Michael's or yeah. from Joanne's, like little fluff balls. Yeah. I would glue them together and make Muppets out of them. So I had like Grover and. Oh, cute. Jeez, I, I like I like watch I I watched Muppet Babies a lot as a kid. I can't. Me say, too. I can't, yeah, I think yeah. I liked Fozzie Bear. I don't I even know why. I think a lot why. of comedians like relate to Fozzie Bear. <laughs> <That might be. laughs> um, but there's an obscure one I like, and I can't think. Um, was it like the Swedish Chef? Or... Yeah, probably like one of those. Like just the <laughs> like one. That's, one of those like side ones. Yeah. You don't have to like think about what they're saying. It's yeah. just like like whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I forgot what he even says. Uh, damn, I can't think right now. Um. But uh, let's see what else. Uh, who's so we can talk about your celebrity, uh, Dick or Richard? Do you want to describe them? You can just you can, just, you no, can describe them, is, and then I can try to guess. This is so embarrassing, and I might have fucked up the assignment a little bit, You're but fine. I can't remember. So she was telling me last night, and you, you said something about like a, a a dick or a character like that, and maybe you didn't even use the word wood, or maybe you did. I did. Okay. <laughs> so who I immediately thought of is Woody from Toy Story. So that's the celebrity that popped into my head. Oh, so what's your favorite so, thing about him? I went very innocent with it. Probably that he's played by Tom Hanks. And <laughs> also that I think the Toy Story um, scripts are really good. They uh, are. Specifically the third one. I'm going to say his name wrong. Michael Arndt. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. Um, I just like, I love movies that are well done that kind of somehow manage to appeal to like kids and adults. Like, with my stand-up, like, it's not that I think it's bad, but I'm like, you can't bring a five-year-old and a 40-year-old in on this. And you're so. animated like you could. The way you, the way you <laughs> deliver it, it's like, oh, a kid could see this. And then it's like, maybe. no, maybe not. Maybe if they didn't understand Borderline. how dark some of the things I'm saying yeah. was. Maybe Just everything in code words. <laughs> maybe they'd be like, that woman wearing all the fun colors is, is moving around a lot. But, um, yeah, I so, yeah, I like this whole, like, he's like, like such a good guy and such a <laughs> Like, you know, he's just sort of like, I guess I like that kind of like nice guy, cowboy, hero kind of. Like, hey, ma'am. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, like, I like Shirley Temple movies and like, I feel like there's, she's not, obviously not a man, but yeah. the way she'll play a character, she'll play it like Woody sometimes. Like she kind of, I have like so many Shirley Temple DVDs. Um, I've never she, seen a Shirley Temple oh, movie. Oh, you yeah. should. I just had a Shirley Temple show in Mesa. <laughs> uh, some old yeah. people were there, of course. But um, she'll kind of like walk in like. Hey, what are you doing? Like, yeah, yeah, it's kind of like that. Yeah. But she's not a man, obviously. But yeah. she'll do this man character. Like, yeah, her whole acting career was just her acting like Woody. Yeah, from Toy Story. I feel like, <laughs> or maybe Woody. Maybe. Oh, like, maybe he's maybe because she came first. Maybe they based it a little bit off Shirley Temple. That'd be really funny. Yeah, but yeah, the like kind of like howdy, man. What's he the sheriff of toys? <laughs> Let's see. What's, we're on Wikipedia for Sheriff <laughs> Woody. If you know what kind of crack research is going on over here. Yeah. Um, hardcore. Did you say sheriff? I think he's like the sheriff of the toy chest. Um, <laughs> I like so like that. It's like mm. it's like a snowman being the sheriff of Snowflake Town. Yeah, something. exactly. Like it's not. It's cute. Yeah. I wish he's such a likable character. And so when you said that, and I thought of Richard Nixon and Woody. Yeah. And then, like, Woody was just the one I would rather spend time thinking about. You know, the weird thing about Richard Nixon is he would wear full-blown suits. Like, man's, you know, like, yeah. button-up suit, like, 1960s, yeah. on the beach. Oh, so weird. <laughs> it's so That's weird. so freaky. Yeah. You knew he was guilty. He was doing that. Take People taking themselves too seriously, like Trump. Yeah. And, like, they're... Do you reputation. think he was body, body self-conscious or something? Maybe. Like, it's... Full suits on the beach. Was it a hot day? Like, I hope not. <laughs> That's so... Like, weird. don't enjoy life. He's trying to enjoy life, obviously, but yeah. not... It's kind of like, uh, be Like, I grew up kind of a rest around weed and never smoked it. Mm. So, and I just finally smoked it for the first time a few months ago, and I freaked out. But, because I hit the bong, like, seven times. Oh, no, you should always do very little. I know, right? Yeah. I was like, where am I? Oh, man. I was in a safe place. I was like, someone's like, are you going to drive home? I'm like, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I better not. <laughs> um, oh, so, so my celebrity, I'm going to describe it. Okay. I'm just going to, like, lead up to it. Okay. And, uh, okay, so this this person um, was born in 1993. 
Mine actually may not be a person. Just keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, born 1993. I'm going to treat them like a person, though. Okay. Uh, they changed their name a few times and finally changed their name in 2004 legally. Um, they, are, they are one of the nation's uh, sellers. They, this, this, this famous person sells relationship and intimacy aids. Um, this person did 80 plus million dollars in retail sales in 2007 alone. Um, they, they have people working under them for only, for only being like, yeah. like 29 years old. I don't know when this article was out, but whatever age they are now, uh, 29, I don't know. So they're like in their twenties or thirties. Um, they have 75,000 specially trained and certified employees around the world <laughs> um no you can't think of it who it could be well um, i'm thinking it's like somebody who owns some kind of like sex toy industry oh, thing yeah that's where i'm going but i'm not real familiar with like uh sex toy stuff like, that's okay they go to your home they can go to your home and like oh, you know show oh, they have it. those like passion parties yeah is a passion party the thing or am i supposed to guess a more specific the, the company Company. I don't know if I know specific passion party companies. They sell a lot of dicks. Oh, Ashley Madison. That's the. Oh, other is that one too? No, I know. They, it's a site for married people to go cheat with each other. Uh, people make five hundred thousand dollars a year with this company. That's insane. What am I doing wrong? All right. <laughs> uh, it is uh, starts with a P. For penis. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna guess it. Um, the set is two words. P starts with P. The second one starts with an R. I'm not gonna know it. Um, what do you call vanilla extract? Like, what's when you say vanilla extract? What do they say in the beginning? No, sorry, that's He's bad. <laughs> um, so, like, if you're not gonna have sex, you wear a condom. No, yeah, no, no. <laughs> you're not gonna finger, have sex. Like, you wear a certain thing on oh, your. Oh, abstinent. Yeah, if abstinent you're gonna... ring. That's a weird or... name for a sex company. <laughs> Abstinence <laughs> romance. <laughs> I was gonna say purity. Promise ring. ring promise. promise. It's a purity ring. I thought purity. It was purity. Pro, pro, pleasure. Purity. Purity. Promise. What? <laughs> pleasure ring. <laughs> what does that have a nub for like your clay? Okay. Um. So it's pure romance. Pure romance. So that's okay. my. I was gonna do another one. I never would have gotten that. I haven't. That's really okay. Heard of it. I yeah. went to one once, and my my boyfriend at the time was happy because <laughs> I got something. Um, what else? What can we go over? I was going to ask... Oh, what's your favorite candy bar? Probably cake. Butterfinger. Butterfinger? Actually. That's the worst one! What? <laughs> I, <laughs> I think my brother got them all the time as a kid. And, like, I like the chocolate. We get to the hard part, I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I like anything that's peanut butter chocolate. Oh, I like any... But not... I don't like that it's hard. Yeah. Do you like... Do you like... You like the hard peanut butter? Any, anything. So it could be, like... Yeah, um, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, Reese's Oh, Reese's. I like those, yeah. I like Kit Kats. Easter ones, the Christmas ones are the best. Yeah. So, everybody listening, if you go to one of Heather's shows, bring her peanut butter chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> so she can eat it in bed and get it all over. <laughs> get in trouble at the hotel. Um, let's see. Is there anything else, is there anything you want to, like, plug? Like, what's your social media? Let me, let me plug it, because I like to get followers. It makes me happy. Oh, yeah, so yeah. find me. Um, I'm... Casual Velvet on um, <laughs> Twitter, yeah. At Casual Velvet, one word, uh, and Sounds then like a band name. <laughs> I like it. It's cute, huh? I, like I, really, it. I really needed to get creative. And then on Instagram, uh, I'm the Heatness, the Heatness. Uh, so yeah, go find me, Heather Thompson. And it's not it's not a plug for the heat in Florida, like like Miami Heat. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Heatness. That's so cool. I have April O'Neil as my Instagram, and I'm trying to sell it to the porn star uh, for ten thousand dollars, but she doesn't have that. And I'm like, you're in the porn industry, why don't you? Has she did she contact you and want to buy it? Um, I mess I emailed her. Okay. Uh, I also emailed Ninja Turtles, like Nickelodeon, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and the Ninja Turtles comic book company, yeah. and they haven't responded. Look but. at you, business lady. <laughs> I know. Just like I'm sitting on this. Somebody like I'm si- like somebody like sent. Uh, mm-hmm. I was at a comedy thing like a comedy show and somebody was like are you really april o'neill because i announced it during yeah, my set yeah he's like you should sell that i'm like fuck i'm sitting on a domain <laughs> 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 i'm like i gotta sell it before 
where Instagram suddenly just goes, like, Instagram could be nothing one day, right? Like, I, I got it because I didn't know it would be popular. It's like you're someone who find out they have gold on their land. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, yeah, like, there's a famous person who died here and I can make this into, like, a museum? What? <laughs> Elvis died in this house or something? I saw his house. This is crazy. Uh, graffiti everywhere. Just people signing the wall. Have you been to Elvis's? No, I watched it because I was enjoying my HBO at my hotel. I watched a documentary on him. It was sort of sad and sweet. Like the end was sad or just the beginning? Yeah, I don't think him and Priscilla should have ever parted ways. I don't think he was okay without her. Is that when he got like bigger? That seemed to be when things really fell apart for him. If you go to Memphis, there's a plane on the property. Or there's the property Mm -hmm. spans over the street. Like it's like they have the house and then across the street they bought that land. The plane, it says Priscilla on the plane. Is the property well cared for? I think so. It's just, again, the walls are graffitied, everyone's signing it. Yeah, yeah, But, um, I didn't, we didn't pay $50. We were, we were, like, on our way from Atlanta to Phoenix. We were just kind of passing. Um, we didn't pay for, like, it was, like, $50 Mm -hmm. just to get in a van to go across the street to go. It Mm. looked like it was nice. Yeah. I might have photos on my phone or something. Um. Yeah, inside I'm not sure, but it looks like it's pretty well kept. Good. Oh, I want to show you something else, but I think it's not. So I might describe something to you. I don't. Sorry, whoever's listening. Um, we sometimes get dick pics from fans, like just recently. Yeah. Um, so and, what was the uh, origin story of the podcast with the oh, police and dick pics? So like my friend Angie, she's not on. I think she's just going through some stuff right now. Um, she was on. The podcast when we first started she's like April I want to do a podcast and I'm like all right cool mm-hmm. I'm down and then I think she just like blurted out please send dick pics and I'm like all right let's do it um we have a friend a couple friends who have a podcast called please send nudes so yeah. I think she admired that yeah and uh yeah listen to please send nudes that's a I haven't really listened to it a lot but they're really great guys <laughs> Mike Enders and Charles Engel um yeah, so she just blurted it out, and we just started doing it. Um, I'm not even sure if our format's similar to theirs. I have no idea. But, uh, and then we didn't get, we always, we're always asking for dick pics, and no one sends any. And just, like, last week, like, two people sent some. Uh, and we really, like, you know, dick pics attack you. It's kind of just, like, like, I think guys really want nudes. Women are, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, is there a woman, <laughs> like, I wonder if there's a woman out there who really wants a dick pic. Like, is there a really... I mean, there must be Might some. Might be some. Yeah. Everybody's different. Yeah. Like, I want to connect it to a face. Like, yeah, if it's yeah. my boyfriend, you know. Yeah. Um, but we got one. I'll just describe it because I, I, my phone, I don't have any uh, reception. But uh, we got a dick pic. And let me know what you think because there's a girl listening and she wants to know what women think about uh, the dick pics. One of them was sent by a guy. It's a picture of a dick, obviously. Mm-hmm. And then it has, like, googly, cartoon googly eyes on it. Oh, that's funny. And then hearts around it. Oh, well, look. Yeah, I like it when people are I creative. like that. Yeah. Yeah. It has like a little like mm-hmm. poem sort of thing. Uh, I think like, so that one was cute. Yeah. Uh, and then one that this girl listening, that was sent by a guy. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's his or not, but the one the girl sent us, her name is Susan. Um, she sent a picture of a dick. It ha- has a guy measuring it with like, yeah. looks like not even a ruler. It looks like a tiny centimeter ruler. He's measuring his dick with, and he starts it like, bel- like if this is the yeah. bottom of his dick, yeah. he starts it down here, like he starts it there. So it looks like it's like five point five, but it's yeah. really like if you move it up, it's like five inches. So she sent that around her workplace. Okay. And uh, I think that guy killed himself. No, I don't know. Um, <laughs> like I think the women at the workplace made fun of it, and I don't even know if that guy worked there. Um, but yeah, it's a funny picture because he's like trying to overcompensate. I used to have a, like, I don't know if he had a boyfriend who did this, but I had a boyfriend, I'd match up hands. He'd, he'd like mm-hmm. see whose hands yeah, are yeah. bigger. Yeah. And then they always try to do one of these, like, just to be <laughs> like, I'm, no, my hands are definitely really big. Yeah. yeah, yeah like, yeah. I'm like, your hands are already big, but he'll try to like start it so that the bottom of our hands aren't matching and his yeah. is like above mine. Yeah. And I feel like that's just like what? Oppression. 
at, at its <laughs> at its funnest, <laughs> at its most fun. Oh, like he's trying to oppress you a little bit by like yeah. curving over and grabbing your. Yeah, keep you know keep women down and keep uh, minorities down. He was a minority too, so anyways. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think it's also just like human vanity, like. That you want, you know, that if you think it's cool to have big hands and you want your hands to look I mean, super they're good, already big, so dude. <laughs> yeah. Cheated a little bit or like, yeah. Have you ever been attacked by a dick pic in your email? Um, I did get one like unsolicited once. I've really only gotten one once. Oh, and I think I got one on Instagram because... On I, Instagram? Well, here's the thing. Oh, I've, got, I've gotten one on Instagram. I know what you mean. I've right. only been on Instagram for like a year and some change. Like wow, I got wow. on there late, yeah. And then I was like, no one's sliding into my DM. I don't feel pretty. And then I realized I had another folder, which still, I did not have oh, that right. many slide-ins. Um, but it was funny because Instagram said to me, um, there were images and they were like, we've blurred these images because you might find them like upsetting, something yeah. like that. And I didn't click on them to get them unblurred. So I kind of assumed they're probably filthy, but I didn't know if I wanted to see it. Yeah. So I sort of have this like mystery sitting in my other folder on Instagram, like a mystery that could be a penis. Yeah, I mean, I, I it would be funny if like it was just like a cat gift or something. <laughs> but like, I assume if Instagram is going to the trouble to be like, you might not want to see this, so we've we've blurred this out for you. Uh, that it's probably it's just like somebody drew two circles with like little circles in, in the middle. <laughs> it's just like on a chalkboard or something. Yeah, I don't know. And sometimes you can see, if it's blurred, you can see the silhouette or something, but maybe not. Well, good Instagram blurring, because there's a guy trying to send me stuff. I, I wanted him to be part of the podcast. Um, we'll see. But he was sending, like, he was trying to, he sent a video of him jerking off to, like a, yeah. like, a girl's face. And I'm like, no, let's make it a political figure if we're going to do that. But it's like, how do you talk about that on a podcast that is of that name? I'll figure it out. I know it's weird. I, I've, I've opened up a weird can of worms with the name of this podcast. Um, <laughs> um, but, it, you know, whatever I get sent, I got to, like, find it useful somehow. So, um, well, I think that's it. What's your next show? Uh, my next show is in L.A., and it is May 5th. And I can try and find info for it. Oh, cool. Yay. It's called Townies. Oh, and, um, it's like Maine. It's like you're going back to Maine. <laughs> <laughs> Add up down there. I don't know why it's called. Maybe it'll be quaint and sweet. Um, at Skip Town Playhouse. So it's uh, May 5th, 7.30, Skip Town Playhouse, 665 North Heliotrope, Heliotrope Drive, Los Angeles. Oh, sweet. Yeah. You can do like 30 minutes? No, I think I'm just doing like 8 to 10, the standard LA. What's the concept of the show? Is there any sort of concept? You know, I haven't done it before. I don't really think there's a concept other than, like, this, just get a bunch of great stand-up comedians on it. Okay. I was wondering what the... I just the name of the show was like, is there a concept to this? Um, well, let's see. I hope you have a great drive back, and you're safe you're driving back right after this. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for doing the podcast. You're oh welcome. Um, and our emails, please send dickpics at gmail.com. Really just send us anything. It could be, like, pictures. It could be jokes that you want me to that you wrote or something and you're afraid to perform if you oh and by the way shout out to um i think it's yen Choping, sweden um we have like a ton of listeners or one listener who's listening to all the podcasts 35 times each something like that that's our top listener for the past week they really went to town e on it <laughs> and they're really listening, and I, I don't know if you like it, but I hope you like the podcast. Um, and uh, remember to please send dick pics. You can please say, send dick pics. Please, please send dick pics. <laughs>